Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Chief Investment Officer with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, April 11th, 4.57 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with the Revere Roundup Daily Market Insight video. State of the market, we're in a short-term pullback, or are we? Strength today, uh, especially in uh, big cap tech, and you know how that's overweight in the indexes, and leaders acted pretty well too. So it's one day, but uh, enough of a day to say uh, that the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 are back above. The short-term trend line that we watch, that's the 21-day exponential moving average. So I put short-term pullback, and is it over? Because one day is just one day. We need some follow-up to that, and we can't ignore the weakness in breadth, the light volume today, and the fact that mid and small and the Dow are lagging. So check the trend gauge over here. Some improvement, still neutral on market leadership, but the green sub-arrow is back. Still neutral on our short-term trend. We've got a mixed bag here. We've got the, uh, as I said, S&P and NASDAQ 100 are back above the 21-day moving average, mid and small caps, below the 21, but above the 50-day moving average, and the Dow firmly below the 21-day moving average and also below the 50-day moving average. And the slope of the line has flattened out on the 50-day as well. That's why we've got the yellow sub-arrow. Uh, on our medium-term indicator. But the green arrow there for the other four indexes and all five are trending well above the long-term 200-day moving average. Remember, no, no matter how bad leaders start to uh, underperform, as long as the market uh, is above the 50-day moving average and the trend line is higher, and of course, the 200-day moving average, there's a big difference between those two in a big chasm. Uh, but you can't get too bearish if you're above the 50-day, and you can't. Uh, the market never falls apart as long as it stays above the 200-day. As I mentioned yesterday, you'll get uh, maybe a 10, 12% pullback to the 200-day. That's typically what we see, uh, but that's not even in the equation as of right now. And uh, it's crazy in the market how things can change on a dime. So woke up this morning, the futures were down almost a half of a percent. Uh, undercutting yesterday's lows, in fact, back to the lows of a month ago. And PPI came out at 8.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, and it was cooler than expected. I, I don't know if these numbers are manipulated. It's very obvious that commodities are all higher, and uh, it's also obvious that commodities go into pretty much everything, every product that's made, but we go by the numbers. And even more than that, we go by the reaction to the numbers, and that cool PPI sparked uh, a big positive reversal off of the overnight lows to the point that we were opening green uh, by a quarter percent on the S&P and four-tenths on the NASDAQ 100. Uh, harsh sell-off right after the open made it look like uh, that green was a mirage, uh, but late morning we U-turned, formed an intraday cup and handle, and broke out in a very strong manner. Uh, after 2 p.m. Eastern time, ironically, on a below average 30-year bond auction. But uh, we wavered for a while there and just blasted to the upside. You'll see when we look at the interday charts there, closed um, back above the 21, as I said, on the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. That's no magic formula, but it is a trend line. And if the, the trend line hooks back up and it acts as support if it gets tested, then we can't argue with the market. So we put more cash back to work today and we'll see what happens tomorrow and into next week. No predictions, just going by what the market was telling us. But if you were arguing uh, that uh, you didn't believe what the numbers were today, by the end of the day, uh, you were kicking yourself. So the headline, cool PPI spark, sparked a strong reversal higher. Here are the final numbers. The big seven really did rule the day and especially Apple, which has been uh, really lagging, but up 4.3% today. And NVIDIA with a textbook bounce off the 10-week, uh, 50-day moving average yesterday, following through to the upside today, both of them up more than 4%. NVIDIA, more than any other stock, is the bellwether of this market. And if it's acting well, it put in a very nice wedge pop today. <clears throat> You'll see that. 
when we get to the charts. RG8, this is our eight growth ETF composite, up 0.75%, most notably that the FFTY, that's the IBD50, full of 50 liters, uh, the way it's constructed, up 1.4% on the day. So that's an additional check mark in the bulls column. S&P 500, uh, up 0.74%, was up as much as almost a percent on the day before uh, pulling back a bit into the close. But breadth was weak, equal weight. Uh, RSP, that's the equal weight S&P 500, was red on the day by seven-tenths of a percent. Very common when you see financials down and you see uh, oils down on the day as they're pretty numerous uh, and they were both weak. And that's going to weigh on not only bid and small caps, but also on the overall breadth uh, of the S&P. Uh, NASDAQ 100, uh, up 1.6% on the day, equal weight, just up over a percent. Dow, just barely negative, very disappointing there. Mid caps, just barely positive, up 0.05%. Russell 2000 small caps, up 0.7%. Global 6040, up 0.34%. In-house growth protection, up 0.86%. I'll talk about the portfolio changes when we get to the tail of the tape, but let's start off with the charts here, and here's the S&P 500. We'll go to that five-minute chart that I uh, wanted to talk about, and you can see, uh, it, so intraday, we're down like around here, or not intraday, pre-market, uh, floundering, and then a uh, big move to the upside with the PPI number coming out. We gapped up and then immediately sold off. Uh, but look where we found support, right near yesterday's lows, uh, and put in a little bit of a bottom, took about 20 minutes, then started to work to the upside, put in this handle, and then 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, once those bond, uh, it was a 30-year bond auction, there's some angst about those, but it was as soon as it wasn't a complete disaster, stocks just blasted off to the upside. Uh, S&P 500 with a clear break above there, and you can see the strength over the next hour and a half, uh, and then a little bit of a base and a fade the last uh, 15 minutes or so, but definitely a win for the bulls, uh, 52.11 late yesterday, uh, late uh, high on Wednesday, 52.11 the high today, that's the next uh, level that we want to get across. Let's go back to the daily. We closed basically barely the tenth of a percent above the eight-day exponential moving average, uh, clearly above the 21, but it is just the first day close. We want to see multiples, and I and ideally, if we see the 21 tested, we want to bounce there uh, and then go back to the uh, upside. Line in the sand can very clearly be drawn over the three uh, lows of uh, the last week's negative reversal and the prior two sessions here. And then very clearly, we're looking to get above the highs uh, of what we've been seeing uh, and kind of where we pause today. Uh, it's up about really 52.20 is where we want to uh, break above to get out of this little recent range that we've been trading in. So that's what the bulls will be looking for. NASDAQ 100, you can see the declining tops trend line here, very clearly broken. That's, uh, that's the wedge pop that I was talking about. Bounced right off the 50-day moving average, which has been acting as support and uh, clear strength to the upside. Volume on the light side. Remember, when panic comes into the market like it did yesterday on CPI, volume is always heavy. Uh, the next day, it doesn't necessarily have to regain it, uh, regain that uh, the, the volume across the board, but you do need to see some follow-up strength uh, in a pretty short uh, order of time uh, in order to give more confidence to the upside. And frankly, I could smell the bear fur today as we were rallying after that two o'clock uh, move in particular. Here's where the mess is. This is the Dow. You can see the 21 day very clearly rolled over. It's gonna come through the 50 day next week, barring, barring some huge move back to the upside, uh, but two clear closes below the 50 day moving average as well. Uh, not good stuff there. And it's just an avoid. Mid caps, MDY, uh, just barely positive on the day. A little bit of a disappointment. No relative strength this week uh, on mid caps. Below the declining 21. So what are we looking for now? Declining 21. We come up to meet it. What happens there? We want to see a clear breakthrough to the upside on mid caps. And we need that for breadth numbers. The market 
struggles when the breadth isn't there and we need that. And it's the same situation, pausing at the 50 day moving average on small caps. Same thing with the declining uh, trend line on the 21. What happens when we come into that? Uh, will probably have a lot to do with the success of the overall market. So there are the five major indexes. Let's look at the equal weight very quickly. Here's RSP, uh, not as clear, clearly not as good as uh, the market cap weighted S and P 500, and that's because of the big uh, seven names carrying the weight there. But bouncing at the 50-day moving average, and then equal weight Nasdaq 100 into the declining 21-day moving average. Now let's go to the VIX. VIX cooperated, did what you expected. Outside negative reversal to the VIX is pot, is a good thing. That's just what you want to see is the direct opposite of what's going on with the market. Uh, down 5.6%, breaking back below the 15 level. Now to the dollar. Uh, dollar pausing at these highs. Bulls want to see this break back below the 105 level here. Uh, on precious metals, gold continues to rock uh, up 1.94%. Gold stocks, nice after bouncing at the ADMA yesterday, more follow through to the upside, up 2.3%. Silver, up 2.2%. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, tighter range today, up less than a percent, but holding the 21 day moving average on its intraday pullback. Now to bonds. Uh, bonds basically closed where they closed yesterday, uh, fairly tight range. And, um, the, the fact that the price is below the bottom of the recent range means that you're going to see the breakout still intact for rates. We very much bulls would like to see rates pull back there. There's the TLT. That's the, uh, long bond. Here's the TYX. And uh, higher high on that, up 0.54%. That breakout level was the 40, 45 level, 0TNX, the 10-year uh, higher close as well. And you can see we're still about above the breakout level there, but the bulls didn't care about any of that today. Uh, let's go to the tail of the tape now. I'll pause this. Talked about PPI. That was the big news on the day. And then the follow-up strength in the afternoon. Day count. Up one up day, uh, right on the eight day exponential moving average, which has a flat slope. One close above the 21 day moving average, which also has a flat slope. Uh, these expectations go from neutral now to positive, with us being back above, uh, but it is only one close above. We need to see some follow through strength there. Uh, as far as sectors go, it was all tech today. Uh, semiconductors, the big seven, XL, C, K, and Y, those are the three tech sectors, and biotech on the downside, oils, and growth really outperforming, uh, again, financials, staples, utilities, and healthcare. The defensive sectors are what, what uh, were down today and weak. As far as the portfolio goes, uh, added uh, quite a bit of exposure increased it by uh, a little less, a little more than 25%. So we added to SSO. Our mantra is SSO. We want to uh, have the equivalent of the S&P 500 uh, 60% exposure if we're, or a beta of 0.6 if we are above the 21 day moving average. That's where we got to by the end of the day. And that's where we were with SSO by the end of the day. We added to Dell. We added to NVIDIA where we got stopped earlier this week. Uh, we bought CCJ uh, and we bought QLD. This to me is a just a really nice setup. If uh, I've been mentioning for a while that the relative lack of relative strength uh, here on the NASDAQ 100 and what we do today, the relative strength line broke back above the moving average. Uh, and that's as significant as the price um, pattern is. And that was another reason why we put in QLD. It's a very low risk uh, entry. And so is the S&P 500 for that matter. Uh, these lows going back to last week should hold on any pullback. Uh, how far are we above the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100? 1.8%. Uh, uh, so the risk to reward is very clearly there. So that ticked our adjusted beta up from a 0.92 to a 1.25. And bottom line on the day, cool PPI sparks a pre-market reversal higher 
Afternoon strength carried the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 back above their 21-day moving average. That's bullish. But of course, it's one day and we need to see some follow through. Let's take a trip through the portfolio and some other names uh, that we're looking at. We'll start off with our largest position. That's NVIDIA. Uh, here's a very, uh, th that wedge pop as well. Uh, you can see the very clear uh, break there back above the 21 day moving average. You've also got the relative strength crossing above the moving average. And if you look at the weekly chart, uh, this is just, it's in all the O'Neill textbooks. Uh, bounce at the 50 day moving average slash 10 week moving average in this case it is. And it's a add on buy point or a, a start point and it's low risk and your low is the low of that bar uh, for a stop. Didn't quite get to the 50 day as you can see here, but the 10 week, uh, that was the bounce area. And that's why you need to track uh, both the 10 week and the 50 day moving average uh, for bounce spots. All right, next up, Micron. Strength return today, back above the eight day exponential moving average. Uber, nice day today, up 2.5% into the declining 21 day moving average. And that has been acting as resistance for almost three weeks. Uh, we want to see a clear break back above there. And if we get it, we'll be adding more to our position. Uh, Eli Lilly, uh, one of the few that was down today, tight inside day. This is just coiling for a move. Obviously, the bulls want to see that move back to the upside. Uh, FCX uh, bounced at the 50 level, holding the eight-day exponential moving average, looking for a low-risk uh, add to some that we sold into strength prior to this. CrowdStrike also into the declining 21-day moving average, another one where the 21 has been acting as resistance. We want to see a move, uh, substantial move back through there, and we'll add to that. Dell, uh, tight inside day today, just holding on to the eight-day moving average. And CCJ, nice break uh, up and handle there. Uh, you can see the declining tops trend line within the handle. Closed right on the pivot for the most part, but uh, look at how on the pullback, the volume was way lower than the volume bars leading up to the pivot point and the volume today. So that's uh, very positive there. Uh, sectors that we own, IBIT, I already showed that, uranium, uh, CCJ is a big component of that, very similar pattern there. Uh, Nugget, uh, we showed uh, that as well, and VDE oil. Uh, pulling back, you can see the declining tops trend line there, undercut and reclaim the eight-day exponential moving average. All right, some other strong stocks today. Uh, Coinbase, uh, C-O-I-N, if I could type, you'd see it quicker, coin, uh, bouncing off the eight-day exponential, uh, 21 day after undercut and reclaiming it yesterday. Hood got a downgrade today and it was bought up regardless of the downgrade, up 3.6%. That's a pretty nice looking pattern there. Uh, a Lab, this is an AI chip company with a recent IPO breaking above this uh, week and a half consolidation there. Uh, Kava stopped us out earlier in the week, following back off of that 10 week moving average, uh, looking good there. Uh, Datadog, we've talked about uh, some software names, and that's a break above this uh, consolidation area there. And look at the volume, and this is high on our watch list. Another software stock team with a big gap up through the declining 50-day uh, moving average off the 21-day, and that was on an upgrade. Uh, we stopped on net yesterday into weakness. That's still inside this consolidation zone. Uh, how about the uh, the leader from prior uh, SMCI working on a declining tops trend line break and also looking at support right there on the 50-day moving average and 10-week moving average? That's a low-risk entry point there too. VRT, uh, very nice on the weekly and on the daily new highs before uh, reversing. One... Uh, Stock that tried to break out today but wasn't quite ready. Nutanix gapped up, but some sellers came in early, heavy volume, uh, but it couldn't overcome that selling. So big resistance uh, right there around the 66 level for Nutanix, uh, for now anyway. 
And what else do I want to show? APP continues to be uh, extremely strong, bouncing at the eight day. That's going to wrap it. As always, I'd like to hear from the emails, DonnaRiveraAsset.com. The phone's 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. If you're interested in becoming a client, email my partner, Dan Stewart, DanRiveraAsset.com. Uh, our flagship portfolio is named Grotection because it's designed to grow assets during uptrends and protect them during downtrends, which is not something you'll get from your pie chart advisor, but they'll tell you to just hang in there and give you a nice desk calendar at Christmas time. But as William O'Neill said, anybody can get you in who's going to get you out. If the market uh, goes lower, we'll continue to get defensive. But for now, positive reversal, some signs that the market wants to regain uh, the uptrend. And that's what we're going with right now until evidence to the contrary uh, presents itself. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the video for Thursday, April 11th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.